I invite you to rise and turn to the back of the church. We are gathered in the name in which we are baptized, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy and the God of all consolation, who comforts us in all our sorrows so that we can comfort others in their sorrows with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, who formed us from the dust of the earth, who by your breath gave us life, we glorify you. Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, who suffered death for all humanity, who rose from the grave to open the way to eternal life, we praise you. Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, the comforter of all who sorrow, our sure confidence and everlasting hope, we worship you. To you, O blessed Trinity, be glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. I'm going to invite you to sing our processional hymn, It is How Great Thou Art, and the words will be up on the screen.
Oh God of grace and glory, we remember before you today Margaret and Elaine's children. We thank you for giving her to us to know and to love us a companion in her pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us and mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we may live in confidence and hope until by your call we are gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all your saints. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. I welcome you in the name of Jesus, the Savior of the world. We are gathered here to worship to proclaim Christ crucified and risen, to remember before God, Marg Shelter, and to give thanks for her life, to commend her to her merciful Redeemer, and to comfort one another in our grief. It's appropriate that the service is being held this morning here at Trinity Sebastopol, as her birthplace was only a few concessions over, down over on Fork Street in Southeast Hope Township. To honor Marg's acts of food generosity over her life, the family will invite each of you to receive, to receive a boxed lunch, which has been prepared by Kitchen Cuttings of Almira. So as you're walking to the parking lot, we've got some tables set up, and we will have people there to hand out the box lunches and the cold drink for you to enjoy for your lunches. A private family interment will take place in St. James Lutheran Cemetery in St. Jacob's. And just please note that this service is being recorded and we will be sending out a link to the record to a, both an audio and recorded uh, an audio recording audio and visual recording, that's what I wanted to say, uh, of our service later on in the day. May all of you be comforted with the promise and hope of new life that is given to us through Christ's own death and resurrection. At this point, we'll continue with the tribute to Marg, and I invite forward Melissa Shelter, granddaughter of Marg. Give me one second, I will perform my duty of waiting. My grandma, Margaret Elaine Shelter, was such a matriarch of our shelter and wrote families. As the oldest sibling growing up, she's always been taking care of everyone around her for as long as any of us can remember. Not only was she my grandma, but she was such a grandmotherly figure to so many other people, as Grandma Marg, Hamroll Up Marg, Annie Marg, and Great Annie Marg. She had so many nieces and nephews who loved going to their Annie Marg and Uncle Jack's house, and then as they grew up, bringing their kids to see their Great Annie Marg and getting a candy from the candy jar on the tea wagon or a knitted teddy bear to take home and cuddle with. She's always had cookies in that big red cookie jar at the house or some Werther's in her purse. You may have had to dig deep for those candies, but you sure didn't have to dig deep for her love. She had the biggest heart I've seen, and she let people right into it with a big hug and a smile. But boy, oh boy, you sure knew when you were unpressed with something you did by her. I know my aunts and dad can attest to that mother look, having received it once or twice in their lifetime. Growing up in the Margaret household was a slightly different experience than the granddaughter, niece, or nephew version. I think her children probably caused 80% of her gray hairs by doing things like staying out way past curfew, taking hours to get ready before going anywhere, or throwing toga house parties while her and grandpa were out of town. 
At least they knew her kids were good enough that there was never any underage drinking happening at the house at those unchaperoned parties, right? But as she grew older, the strict mom who raised such amazing and selfless children became this softened, sweet lady who loved to laugh with us, hear all of our stories, watch us poke fun at each other, and even throw out the odd curse word in a, curse word in a heated game of solo. Marg was the hostess with the mostess. You were never hungry leaving her house, and you often walked away with a margarine container full of leftovers. She was always knitting, quilting, or baking something for someone, or anticipation of someone coming to visit her, or dropping off some delicious food when she knew someone was sick, had a loss, or just hadn't seen them in a while. One of her biggest ways to show her love was through that food, and I've got my love of cooking and baking from her. She's been teaching me since before I could see over the counter. She taught me how to knit, knit, pickle beets, how to sew and make jam. But most importantly, she taught me about unconditional love and feeling like the most special person in the world. And I know she made everyone feel special anytime you were around her. We're all gonna be a little sad for a bit as she touched all of our lives so sweetly and has blessed us with so many great memories that will live on with us forever. So for the next little while, every time you take a bite of potato salad or eat a muffin or a square, you'll think of Margaret, your mother, your sister, your aunt, your friend, our grandma, and you'll know that she's watching over you in the passenger seat of a big yellow truck riding shotgun beside my grandpa, finally together again, guiding us through our life. We continue with our readings of scripture, and I invite Tessa Connor up for a reading of Revelation. A reading from Revelation, chapter 21, verses 1 through 7. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new, Jerus new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, see the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them, they will be his people, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, death will be no more, mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To th the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. And I invite Rachel Burt up for a reading of the 23rd Psalm. The Lord, is my, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I will walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff. They comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. 
Surely goodness and mercy, sh mercy shall, shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. And Logan Burt will share a reading from a letter to the Romans. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us. We will not be with, we will not, we, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died. Yes, who was raised, who is the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No. In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. A reading from the Gospel of John. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Oh yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. Here ends our readings. You can do this, Rick. <laughs> oh. So there are, I'm sure there are people sitting out here in the assembly this morning having a deja vu moment, saying, haven't we seen this guy up front before? <laughs> At other shelter funerals? Yes, I've done a number of funerals for the shelter family over the years. And I think I am now officially on retainer. <laughs> I even have a future booking in place. <laughs> so food is how I will remember Marg as well. I find, I find it hard calling her Marg because I always called her Margaret. <laughs> so, but I will call her Marg because that is the name through which all of you probably knew her. So the food, the big three from Marg. Tuna macaroni salad with peas. <laughs> Potato salad and lots of it. I never did reach the bottom of a bowl. <laughs> and yes, hmm, Bonnie? Gates Bears. <laughs> Every single time I visited, I left with, great, with, with a great amount of Gates Bears. She always had a batch. She'd bake them, put them in her freezer, and wait for me to show up. And I think there are still a few dozen left waiting for me in her freezer right now. 
Needless, needless to say, ever since marrying into the shelter family, I've had to expand my belt <laughs> to the point where I had to buy a larger one. <laughs> All because of food. <laughs> Bonnie has told me over the years, I have been shelterized. <laughs> That's shelterized with a C. <laughs> Marge's ministry throughout life was food hospitality. Standing in line yesterday at the visitation, many of you shared stories, stories of food and of Marg. Receiving food from her over her lifetime, and Marg would bring food to people who were recuperating from surgery or illness or in mourning or simply celebrating life's milestones, or attending socials, or baking for special events. The hospitality of food will forever be the indelible mark that she has left on our lives. And hence, the box lunches you will receive afterwards attest to her food hospitality spirit over her lifetime. I'm going to miss the tuna salad but with peas. I'm going to miss the potato salad. I'm going to miss the date squares. <laughs> and most of all, I'm going to miss Mark. You heard these words at the back of the church as we began our service. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death. So as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we've been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. The water that is connected to the rite of baptism flows over one's life and reaches fulfillment in the passing of death into the new life of eternity. I've used this illustration many times over the years and I, I just thought it was so appropriate with Marg, especially with the decline that we saw over the past number of months. Many of you had stood on a lake, and I'm sure maybe at the edge of an ocean, and watched the waves coming in. And often you'll spot a particularly beautiful wave a little bit ways out. It's tall, it's majestic, it stands out from all the other waves, it's full of power, it's full of stature, it's full of beauty. It's capable of carrying an enormous weight on its back. And you watch it roll forward. It's driven by the wind. It's pulled by unseen forces. And as it moves toward the shore, little bits and pieces fall off of it. However, as it nears to the shoreline, it gathers itself up and raises itself to its full height. Then it touches the bottom and it topples over, splashing its watery contents right down to the last drop. And these rush forward to you with much foaming and much bubbling, and it delivers that last drop right to your very feet. And then, having gently caressed the sand at your feet, the wave immediately withdraws. It slowly, without fuss, ebbs away. It slips back to join the great body of water from where it came from. There, it'll be given new life, and it'll be washed off on yet another shore. A human life very much moves 
like a wave rolling towards the shore. Once they were strong and they were healthy, they were able to tall, stand tall and majestic. They were able to bore tremendous weight on their shoulders. But at some point, they went over the top. The client set in, and the shore of death loomed ahead. They have given themselves completely. They withdraw gently from us. They return to their source of being to become a new creation where death will deliver them again to another shoreline. So this image of this wave reminds us too of the baptismal journey through life, a journey that begins at birth, or if you're a Mennonite, begins when you're a little older. It carries you in varying degrees of swells over your lifespan, and eventually it extends itself out, and the promise of Christ becomes fulfilled. Marg has withdrawn gently from you. She's fulfilled her baptism now. She's returned to her source of being, reunited with Jack after a 23-year absence, reunited with all those who have gone before her. She now has perfect fulfillment and joy in completion on her baptismal journey into God's eternal and everlasting glory. Amen. We continue with uh, our singing of the hymns, and we are going to sing When Peace Like a River, and I'm going to invite you to stand for this one, if you're able to stand.
Let us pray. God of eternity, giver of life, maker of all that is, we come before you in our need. We stand where heaven and earth meet, where life is brought to death, and death has made the gate to new life. On this day of remembering Marg, give us courage and strength for today, and hope and peace for tomorrow. God of forgiveness and love, even when our faith is shaken, your faithfulness is sure. Give light to our footsteps, heal our wounds of grief, and give peace to our minds and bodies. God of comfort, deliver us from fear and doubt, from despair and unbelief, from anger and regret, and bring us to the light of your presence. Allow those gathered here to entrust Marg to your eternal care. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, will be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us command Marg to the mercy of God, our Maker and our Redeemer. I know that my Redeemer lives, and that he shall stand at the last day upon the earth. And though this body is destroyed, yet shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not as a stranger. For none of us lives to oneself, and no one dies to oneself. For if we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend Margaret Elaine Shelter. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and comfort you now and forever. Amen. Our sending him is God be with you till we meet again.
of God's love, we shall one day be brought together in the new life of the resurrection. We go forth in peace. Amen.